So here I just want to share some data that's been accumulated over the last few years about heartworm testing and a phenomenon that's been rediscovered really just in the last three, four years that's referred to as heat treating samples, or we can call it pre-treating samples. So when we test for heartworm, we use blood or plasma or serum on an antigen test to detect antigens from adult female worms that then let us know that that dog is infected with heartworms, likely, and needs additional diagnostic workup and potential treatment for that heartworm infection. But why? Why has heat treating samples sort of been rediscovered and back in the vogue? And how? How do we actually treat these samples? This is the veterinary college at Oklahoma State University where I serve on the faculty. And we teach the veterinary students clinical parasitology. And in the second year parasitology course, we try and do as much um, simulated real life veterinary medicine as we can with the students. They respond well to that method of teaching and we enjoy teaching that way. And so we have a heartworm lab as part of that, that core course. And the students are given blood samples from heartworm positive dogs and asked to work up those samples and then work through a case and come up with treatment recommendations, prevention recommendations based on how those samples perform on the antigen tests. Well, we, we script the lab ahead of time, right? We want to know what's going to happen so it'll match the questions on the handout for the students. And so we go in and um, provide them blood samples from dogs we know are heartworm positive or microfilaria positive or antigen positive, microfilaria negative, you know, some combination of the tests similar to what they'll receive in practice from a patient. So we were getting the lab together a few years ago and what we do, since we, we have 100 students and we don't want to draw 100 mils of blood from a single dog, so we will do what we've done for years, draw a blood sample from a heartworm positive dog and then mix it with blood from a heartworm negative dog to stretch the volume out and that way every student gets their own blood sample and can run the different tests and, and they get more out of the actual experience, hands-on experience, than us just showing them how the test works. So we did that a few years ago and I'd been doing this for 20 years probably. And when we mixed the samples, the sample went from strong positive, like off the charts positive, to negative. We'd never had that happen before. And now we have 100 mils of heartworm negative blood that really isn't much use in our heartworm lab. So we went back to the dog that we had mixed it with, and the donor dog, the dilution dog was negative, and the recipient dog, or the heartworm positive dog, was strong, strong positive, and we hadn't diluted it enough to make the positive go away. We'd done something to block the positive, which ruined the lab for that afternoon, so we had to go into the freezer and get out some frozen serum and try and make everything work for the students that day. Um, but it also got us thinking, Okay, one thing, pretty obvious, don't mix samples in practice. And you think, who would mix heartworm samples? Well, you know, we try and do everything we can to facilitate testing. And sometimes if a client owns several dogs or you're working with a shelter and there's a lot of dogs, they figure, well, we'll mix samples from five dogs, do one test. If one's positive, if it's positive, we'll go back and test individuals. Very bad idea. Not just for dilutional reasons, but because you can actually block antigen results. Okay, so you might get false negatives in all five dogs. So mixing samples not recommended. But also, what the heck is going on here, right? Why would mixing two samples block antigen and that's crazy? And I started thinking about these calls I'd gotten from veterinarians in Oklahoma City um, about dogs that were microfilaria positive but antigen negative. And they'd ask me for an explanation of how that could be. How could you have enough worms, males and females, breeding, Produce females producing microfilaria. There's microfilaria in circulation, so we can find it on just a wet mount of the blood, and yet no antigen. There's not enough females there to make antigen. And I didn't have a satisfactory answer for that question, but we talked about it in lab meeting, and we said, well, maybe those microfilaria the veterinarians are seeing are a different microfilaria. The microfilaria on top is acanthochylinema recondidum, used to be dipetylinema recondidum. We still see this parasite. I know a lot of people feel like it went extinct. I think microfilaria testing went extinct, not acanthochylinema recondidum. So maybe it's the wrong microfilaria. So they sent us the blood, these practitioners in Oklahoma City, and we looked morphologically. It was diarfilaria imitis. We checked by PC it was Dyerflare imitus. These dogs had heart or microfilaria, but no antigen on any antigen test that we used. So we're trying to piece that together with the experience in the teaching lab, and we recognized from talking to um, 
uh, others that had done diagnostics for much longer, that often Dyrofilaria imitis microfilaria, they're very um, well characterized and we can recognize them, that it, it wasn't uncommon for some of the national labs to get that question too, microfilaremic dogs that were antigen negative. And I learned from colleagues that have a lot more experience in diagnostics, they've been doing this a lot longer than I, um, that antigen antibody complexing was thought to be the reason for those false negative antigen tests, and that the idea is when a dog has a lot of antibody, it will block the antigen, and if you somehow treat the sample first, you can remove the antibody, release the antigen, and then detect it. And this is published in Heart and Society Proceedings and other publications from the 1980s. So I graduated vet school in 1993, so I feel like I get a small pass for not knowing that, but it's well documented in the literature about antigen antibody complexes. Um, and so it was standard of care, in fact, in the 1980s when heartworm antigen tests were first released to pretreat the samples before running the antigen detection. So if you go back to the package inserts from the 1980s, there's a pretreatment step involved. And so this isn't, again, anything new. It's almost been rediscovered for the profession now, and we're learning how to apply it. So just if we think about it schematically, you have antibodies, the Y-shaped antibodies, bound to antigen in the sample from the dog, in the plasma or the serum or the whole blood. And historically, we would add a chemical to that sample or heat to the sample, and that would damage the antibodies, break them up, and therefore the antigen, which is very stable, is available for detection. So a test would be negative when the antibody antigen complexes are there, but positive after. Now, this whole concept needs to be revisited with current biochemical techniques for sure, but it was well documented, as I said, in the earlier literature, and so it's our best working model for why we have these blocked antigen samples in dogs today. So we got a case in, I got a call from a veterinarian, um, and he said, I have this dog, he's microfilaria positive, he's antigen negative. I said, hey, I've heard this before, send us a sample. And he did, and we checked the microfilaria or diaphilaria imitis. We ran it before with just a patient side assay, and it was negative. We heat treated it. We used heat because heat's widely available in all diagnostic labs and open to everybody, it's available to everyone. And we ran the sample again, and it was positive. So then we went back to our mixed samples, and we did the same thing. We have a, on the microtiter well assays, which are um, easier to run in batch samples. This is what diagnostic labs generally run, or DiraCheck or PetCheck microtiter well samples. The top row is before heating. The bottom row is after heating. Heating didn't disrupt the positive control. It didn't disrupt our positive sample from a dog we knew had heartworm. But we had, in mixed samples, they were blocked before heating, but after heating, after damaging the factor that's blocking the antigen, they converted to strong positive. Same sample, just a different pretreatment step. So our next question after starting to figure this out is, well, how common is this? Like how many dogs out there are testing negative but really have antigen in circulation? It's just antigen that we can't see, that can't be found on any of the tests regardless of the platform that's used. So we looked first in shelter dogs from the southern United States and we found that over 7% of them converted from negative to positive with heat treatment. Then we looked at cats, and we had some experimentally infected cat samples, so we knew by necropsy for sure these cats had heartworm and nothing else because we had that data, and we knew how many heartworms they had, and there were six cats total. Only one of them was antigen positive before heat treatment, but after we pre-treated the sample and re-ran the antigen test, five of six cats were antigen positive. So we have this awareness in our profession that antigen tests for heartworm don't work so well at diagnosing heartworm infection in cats. And we think that might be because the cat's immune system works so well that it produces a lot of antibody that may mask the antigen in many cats. So then we looked at cats in shelters and found a little over 5% will convert, and again, in the southern United States in a high endemic area, will convert from negative to positive with heat treatment. Some colleagues at Cornell um, that I've been talking with about this data had a great idea. They wanted to look at early infections, and they presented this last summer. And so they had necropsy-confirmed infected dogs, um, samples from those dogs, that they uh, heat-treated, and they were able to detect heartworm infection in dogs 
just four or five months after infection. So early infections are supported by pretreatment of the samples, identifying those early infections. And that's interesting, because to me, it, it's interesting. It loops back to the shelter dogs. We're pretty sure that those 7% or so of shelter dogs in the South that convert from negative to positive with heat treatment, those may well be early infections, OK? So we know that a lot of dogs that go to animal shelters are young. They've already been infected by the mosquito, but they have not been infected for six months yet. So the antigen test isn't positive yet. But with heat treatment, we can pick up the earlier infections and then let the owners, the people that are going to adopt them, into their forever homes, let them know that they do have heartworm and that they'll need to address that. Dogs on slow kill, that was another study that we did. And we found that over 50% of dogs on slow kill will convert from negative to positive. So if you're using slow kill, it's not recommended by American Heart and Society or CAPC or by me, but if you're using slow kill in your practice on some of your patients for medical reasons, if the test goes negative, just know that over half the time, there's still antigen there. Um, they're just, uh, it's just being blocked by the antibody. And we think that's happening because it does kill the worms. We know slow kill kills worms. It just takes two, as long as two and a half years to do it. And in that long, protracted, drawn out period when the worms are dying, there's a lot of inflammation that ensues. And that likely masks detection of antigen. And then what about dogs with clinical heartworm disease? We've had a number of these submitted to us um, at Oklahoma State as we started doing this research. And it's amazing to me how incredibly astute uh, veterinarians are at recognizing heartworm infection. Because the reason dogs with clinical heartworm disease samples are submitted to us is the veterinarian says, this looks like heartworm. She tests the dog, it's negative, and says, that can't be right, and starts looking into it. And sometimes these are dogs that they ha they're coughing, they have a murmur, they're exercise intolerant, they're not on preventive, they're in the southern US in a high prevalence area, so they're at risk, but the test is negative. Two of these have come from cardiologists that actually saw the worm on echo and said, the test is negative, I can see the worm. What's going on? And those convert from negative to positive. So this heat treatment can have great utility in individual cases like that, cases where the veterinarian really suspects heartworm infection. So how common is this? Well, dogs and cats and animal shelters in the southern US that test negative, about 5 to 10% of them will convert to positive with heat treatment. But that's different than many of our patient populations, right? Because those are high risk dogs and cats. Those are dogs and cats in hyperendemic areas, and so we have to be um, concerned about them. But what about our patients? Well, because of this data, CAPC and Heart and Society have been recommending now that we microfilaria test dogs in addition to antigen testing dogs with their annual screening. And it's because those veterinarians in Oklahoma City and other areas discovered dogs are microfilaria positive and antigen negative. So that's one recommendation that's already in place. Screen dogs with both microfilaria test and an antigen test. But it's also true that routine pretreatment of all samples is not recommended. There's no reason to heat treat every sample before running the assay. The assays are extremely sensitive, specific, very good at detecting heartworm infection, and they're very useful for our patients. And they should be used the way they've been USDA approved to be used, the way the regulatory agencies have said to be used, which is just run them according to manufacturer's instructions. Well cared for pet dogs, we don't have published data yet, but we've been collecting that data and so have a few other groups. And all the initial information on well cared for pet dogs, and this is my dog Freckles, who's a very well cared for pet dog, all the information we have so far indicates that they're unlikely, very unlikely, to revert to positive. They're on preventive, they may live in a low endemic area, but just by virtue of being on preventive, you are a low risk dog for heartworm infection. So that changes the predictive value of the test, but it also changes the prevalence of heartworm in the population. That's the most important thing. And so with a very low prevalence population, we don't see reversals. If you want a sample tested this way, we offer it at the Diagnostic Lab at Oklahoma State, the Oklahoma Animal Disease Diagnostic Lab, so you can submit it there. You can also submit it to many of your state and province veterinary labs because they're starting to offer heat reversal. It can be done anywhere. Um, IDEX and ANTEC and the other national commercial services are familiar with reversal. It's not a checkbox, but that would be another conversation to have, too. We heat treat in order to reverse, and so um, it's a little complex to do in practice, and it can be a challenge 
to heat reverse in practice. So I encourage you to work with a diagnostic lab in getting that done. And really only consider pretreatment when you strongly suspect heartworm infection, but the sample tests negative. Thanks very much.